So we're talking about gathering and protecting your family's digital legacy. What ends up happening is we put together a very large collection of materials. Those could be documents, photos, video, audio files. And you start to collect these. And as you're working on this, you end up getting content spread all over the place. Some things might be on your tablet or your phone because you are out and about. Or somebody text messages you something. Maybe you captured something on your camera roll on your mobile phone. Or you're traveling around and you pick up files and you import them into your laptop. And all these files are just sort of scattered to the wind. And what ends up happening is you begin to misplace things. You can't find things. You end up with multiple copies of things. And all of this can be super problematic. So we're talking about uh, gathering your legacy here, what that looks like. And uh, in this class, this is really perfect for people of all levels. So we're going to address how you can actually start to protect that legacy and what steps you need to take uh, in order to do that. So this class is designed for all experience levels. And what we're trying to focus on is making sure that your family history, all the photos, videos, and documents that you have is easy to access from one single place. So this is going to be quite easy. And uh, what you're going to see here is we'll create a way that everyone can have their content together. All right, let's go forward a little bit. And feel free to ask any questions that you have uh, about what we're covering. I'm happy to answer them for those of you who are joining us live. And for those of you watching the replay, thank you for doing that. You'll also find available after this the ability to download the slides from this presentation. So I hope that that's helpful to you. So in this class, we're going to address how you can gather images from different sources. So how do we find these? How do we pull them all into one place? We'll also address, for example, how to gather things into a single location. So what that looks like and how to really create a, a real world folder structure. So I hope that this is useful to you and we'll show you how to pull this together. All right, thank you again for those of you joining. So we're gonna also teach you how to assign meaningful dates to images, particularly scanned photos. Scanned photos tend to really lack any metadata and it's really easy to lose things. So this is gonna really help you find those photos in the future or the documents or the videos. And I'm going to teach you how to back up everything to multiple hard drives in an automated workflow and show you if you're using the cloud, why and how to encrypt the data so it can't be seen or used by other people outside of your control. Okay. My name is Rich Harrington. I am the product lead for a product called Milio Photos. And what I'm going to show you today is not just exclusive to Milio Photos. I'm going to show you best practices and how this all ties together. I've been a photographer and a photo educator, and I've also created many years worth of videos. Uh, and through the years, if I've learned something, I've shared it. So I've written about 40 books on photography and video and design, and more than 200 courses about photography, video, and creativity that have been released through platforms like Kelby Learning and lynda.com and LinkedIn Learning. So if I figure something out, I have a tendency to write it down. And what's kind of funny about that is when you go to look up something and your own face or words are the answer, but it proves the point that memory is a tricky thing and it's easy to forget things, which is why we want to put stuff there. Okay. Welcome guys. Sorry that the link took you someplace else. Yeah, I, I alerted them to that and I'm glad it's just getting fixed. Glad you guys made it. I hope the other people find their way over too. And good to see you guys here. Welcome. And uh, through the years, I've had an opportunity to fix things, and uh, I've worked with television networks and a lot of software companies to make their products better, and I've worked to help uh, major organizations uh, know how to manage their assets, but I also know how to translate that to small projects and personal projects. And like many of you, I have family. I have people I care about in multiple generations, and uh, this is important. So with Mylio Photos, I'm going to show you how we can put everything into one library, connected, and be able to search and use and access that. And I think you guys will like this. With Mylio Photos, you can install it on a Windows device, Mac device, Android, or iOS, and you can have as many devices and storage in your account. 
So we work with local devices and then we connect them over the internet and you're not using any cloud storage nor is anything ever leaving your devices except to go to your devices. So this works out nicely. So I'm gonna share with you the process to kind of get everything organized. And this process will work with other tools as well, but I'll point out what Mylio does that's unique. So I have a five part process. The first part is you need to collect everything. Now collection never really ends because our history doesn't stop. You're gonna have important life events that continue to evolve. You're gonna discover new things. So you're gonna keep collecting, but one of the things to do is to really get everything gathered up front that you can think of and start pulling it in. And you'll be surprised at how many things you initially missed or thought you had. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're also going to start to connect everything. And then we will reflect, select, and protect. So let's jump right into collect. With collect, our goal is to gather everything up. So you want to start to pull everything together into a single location. Now, my suggestion here is that you get a fresh new hard drive. Now, you can use existing ones if you already have them. That's fine. But chances are, when I talk to most people, they have their stuff on a single hard drive. And you're going to want to end up with two copies of everything, bare minimum. If you have only one copy, you are at risk for loss because every hard drive fails. Every one. Some will fail in six months. Some will last for 10 years. But they will fail. They're like tires. And by the way, if you think, oh, I'm just going to put it on a hard drive, unplug it and set it on the shelf, it'll be safe then. We're not putting any wear and tear on it. It's more likely to fail. Why? Because it's an electromagnetic device. And if you don't put electricity into it periodically, it slowly starts to demagnetize and you will start to lose data. And if it's not spinning on at least an occasional basis, the lubricant and everything else in there dries up. And when you plug it in, it goes, and it actually breaks. I know this because I've worked with many hard drive companies. Hard drives are not designed to sit on a shelf unpowered. That is not an archival solution. If you need archives, you can look at things like LTO tape or other solutions or cloud archives, not cloud storage, cloud archives. And I'll talk about that a little later. Hope I didn't ruin anyone's day there talking to you about storage, but I reached a lot of people who are really shooting themselves in the foot. Now, with Mylia Photos, you click the import button and you can point it at anything you have. Photos on a device, photos on a phone, photos on a hard drive, things you've put up into the cloud. All of that stuff is available. I'll switch over here to Mylia really quick and show you. So if I go here, I'm just gonna exit my search and I click the add button right up top. Let's just make that full screen. There we go. I click the add button, it lets me choose where am I bringing stuff from. So I can add from this device and it'll just bring up my folder picker and I can choose anything I have and it will bring it in. Or I can go to a service online, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, Flickr. Uh, our Instagram and Facebook are temporarily down. They're going to be back up very soon. Facebook is just making a quick changeover on some security protocols and then they're going to reconnect those for us. So those will be up shortly. And you can also, if you're on a Mac, connect to Mac OS, iPhoto, uh, Photos for Mac OS, Aperture, any of those type of Mac programs. And on a Windows machine, you can connect easily to your OneDrive folder, et cetera. So what we do is we connect all of those things together and it works out really, really well. So here we go. Let me just jump in and start to show you. So I've got a bunch of devices. And for those of you just joining us, welcome. My name's Rich Harrington. And please feel free to put in any sort of questions you have. I'm happy to have those there. You can ask any questions you want. So just put into the Q&A pod or the chat pod. Uh, totally happy to hear anything that you guys would like to learn about, okay? So over here, my dashboard, you can see all my devices. And I have a lot of devices in play. So for example, as you look here, you can see that this computer, my MacBook, has some files that other machines need. Now, for the most part, it's not that many files that are needed. Uh, you can see right here that my Surface is on the network. And in fact, when I say it's on the network, it's uh, right next to me here while I'm presenting. And it's starting to download the pictures that it needs. So I had some files on this laptop that it needed. 
As you look, you see other devices like my Mac Studio and my Mac Mini. Those are both online at home and they have what they need. My daughter just texted me. She had to reboot my Dell computer at home. And when it comes back online, it's syncing. My phone right now doesn't have Milio running. But as soon as I launch the Milio app and it connects to the network, it's going to show up online and it will start syncing. There it is. So that's one of the things we do is we connect all of your devices directly to each other. It's not going to a cloud. They just discover each other and they can start passing files back and forth. So this phone needs 50 files that are on this computer. If I want to see what that looks like, I can click and go, oh yeah, I added a bunch of eBooks this morning to my Milio library because I wanted the ability to read books when I was on the go. And so this way on my phone and my tablet, I could read some of the books I wrote if I needed to look something up. I've got the manual for my camera. I've got a, a story here, a book all about the editing of Star Wars movies. I'm kind of a nerd, you know, and I can go through and read these different things, some books about the art of photography and other things. And so I can put into my Milio documents, photos, and video all in one central place, which is cool. See, my phone just got one ebook. It went from 50 to 49. So <laughs> it's working. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, just put them into the chat. But that's that process of connecting your devices to each other. And it works really well. Okay. So with Mylia Photos, you can connect your computer, your phone, tablet, hard drive, memory cards, digital cameras, social media. Uh, if you have a NAS, that's a network attached storage device, you can use it in your scanner. And it works well. Okay. What do you need by need? I'm not sure. Oh, need. So it's not downloaded to that device. So when my things were syncing, my laptop had some files that my other devices didn't. So this morning at the hotel, I went into my Milio on my laptop and I added a folder. I just added a folder that had eBooks in it. I had these eBooks on my laptop. And I realized that I often was out and about without my laptop and wanted to be able to look something up. And I keep a bunch of eBooks on my laptop that have useful reference material that I need. Well, I have it on my phone now. And I told my phone that I wanted it to download them at original quality so I can read them whenever I need it on my phone. And so different devices will have material. So the reason why my laptop has a whole bunch here is I just set up another vault, which I'll talk about vaults later. But this one needs a lot of files for my devices, but I turned it off for now. But later on, it'll go back on and it'll start to sync. But you can see that things back up and communicate with each other. That's what's happening there. So I hope that that makes sense. We'll talk more about protection a little bit later in the presentation. Okay. One of the things we can do as we start to bring everything together is end up with multiple copies of the same thing. This happens all the time because you put a memory card in your laptop and you brought some photos in, or it's on your phone, but you also put it on a hard drive already. And you end up with lots of copies of the same thing. This way we can get rid of those cleanly and easily. So Milio does this with a feature called dedupe. And when you run it, it will look through your photos and find photos that are duplicate copies. So I can go here to Milio and say, organize, find duplicate photos, and it will look. In this case, it found a picture that I already had in my library twice. It was imported two times. One of them has metadata, XMP, probably location information. The other one doesn't. Some of these I need to connect and download because they're on different devices. But what it can do is automatically scan through those, find the ones that are the best, and then it will allow you to delete and clean them up. And when you do, it keeps all the information about those, but it does clean them up. And you'll be able to clean out your files very easily, and it will remove any duplicates. So that's the idea of dedupe. Just scans, finds any pictures that you have multiple copies of, and then safely removes the unnecessary copies and cleans it up, giving you back hard drive space. So when I did this one, for example, I didn't want to delete, but I just moved them. And that again, freed up space on that device. 
We also have a tool called Photo Declutter. And this looks for pictures that are similar based on time. And so you'll end up sometimes with lots of shots, like you're trying to get a group photo. This will get rid of it. And then you can mark them. So I'll give you a great example of when you might use something like this. Uh, I'll go ahead and choose my photo declutter, organize, find similar photos. And I'm going to limit this to looking at one particular event. So I'll click on filter. And instead of looking at all my pictures, I'm just going to tell it to look in a particular folder. Folder. And I'm going to use my son's graduation. I recently photographed that this past summer. And there's going to be a lot of pictures that are really similar. I can say, show me any pictures that were taken within 10 seconds of each other. It analyzes it and puts them together. Well, okay, let's look. Here we have three photos. And you know what? This is the best one. I don't think I want the one where I'm taking off the mask. So let me just mark that for delete and save some space. And this one's kind of cute too, although her eyes are closed. This is much better, but I'll keep them both. Then I can go to the next set. And this one is really <laughs> illustrates the problem. Okay, he's looking down. Nope, that's okay. Let's see, that one's all right. Looking down. Okay, he's really laughing. It's not a very good picture yet. Okay, that's kind of cute. They're both really laughing and I want that one. And that's looking good. I'll crop out the person on the left. Oh, look at that, somebody right over his shoulder. Not so good. Again, bad, silly laughs. That's okay, right? And so we can go through and mark the ones that we don't really want. All right, that's genuine joy. Now we're getting into the good ones, right? Good. Oh, that's pretty goofy. Look at those teeth. That's my wife. She'll kill me later, right? And so we can go through and just review the pictures until we find the best of. Because I'll give you an example. When you try to take a picture of two teenagers at the same time, it's not going to work. And you know, I probably don't need these either, right? That one's good. Not good not good, right? And so you can go through and free up that disk space. So here, the quandary, how do I get two teenagers to smile at the same time? <laughs> so I could just step through. And once you're all done with that, it's really easy to either delete or move those out and free up some disk space. So that's that idea of declutter. Look at a particular time period and find when you had a whole bunch of pictures that you shot in a row, because we do that. Like, something like a graduation. We don't want to miss a moment. So we over photograph it. And then you're paying for cloud storage or clutter, or you're backing up and you have bad photos. Why not get rid of them? Later this year, like April-ish, May-ish, we're going to have some extra filters you could apply, like mark the ones that are blurry, show, you know, hide the ones that are out of focus. Uh, show me the ones where people's eyes are closed, making it easier to delete those too. So we'll be able to help you clean those up really quickly. All right, so I hope that that made sense. That was an example of some of those tools. I'm just gonna clear the filters out right now and you'll see everything loads up. All right, so that's that idea of declutter. We also allow you to import from multiple social media accounts. So you can reclaim your digital files from different places. We support pulling in from Instagram and Facebook those are temporarily down for a very short period. and will be back up online soon. Uh, Flickr and Google Takeout. Google and Fa oh, sorry, Facebook and Instagram just made a security change that they alerted us to to change. And once that's in place and approved, then the importer will turn back on. But Flickr and Google also work. And you'll be amazed at how many things have consolidated on Google through the years. So what you can do is in Mylio Photos, just click the import button and choose an online service. Scroll down and you can get all your pictures off of Google Photos, which personally, I would really, really recommend you do. We'll talk about why later. Uh, I can log into my Flickr account and it will open it up and invite me to log in. And then once I'm logged in, I can then pull those down to my laptop. Now I'm at the convention center here. They've got several things restricted of what we're allowed to access on the network, not surprising but that'll let you log in and pull those things down. And so once you do that, you'll be able to get in. There we go. And I'll just log in. And oh yeah, 
<laughs> What's my password? I'm not going to do my password in front of you right now, but once I was logged in, I'll show you the results. It looks like this. Here's what happens when you import. Here's all my Instagram photos that I previously imported in order and fashion. And there could be videos in there too, right? You might have uploaded videos, not just photos, or maybe you have still pictures. And as you can see here, you can have those pictures in there from a trip. You can sort these and arrange them by different things, right? So if the dates weren't correct, because Instagram strips all the dates, you can go in and say that you want to just organize these and sort them custom or by name, right? And that'll start to rearrange them or by different properties. And so you can see there how easy that is to just sort of choose how you're arranging things. And now, you know, oh, there's all these pictures from a recent trip. I can start to find things. Oh, that's when the family and I went to the La Brea Tar Pits. Cool. There we go. And I posted some photos to Instagram. Same thing. Here's my Flickr albums I'd posted through the years. Here's Facebook. And you can view it as all of Facebook or show the container. And here's some wonderful family memories, trips we took, activities, right? And all of it's there, the best of photos. And so you can see that stuff and reclaim all of it, which you might have lost. And once you've pulled it down, you can start moving it around or putting it wherever it needs to go. Okay, let's keep going. So I like this ability to reclaim things and be able to see all of it. We also create a real world folder structure, and this is important. You want to be using folders as an organizational tool because folders are real world. Folders have an extra level of protection and make it easier to segment things out or identify things, excuse me, for backup or sharing. So in Mylio, as you work, everything has a real world folder associated with it. Sometimes those real world folders are like this one show and finder. It's actually on my computer, Macintosh user, hard users, rich documents, eBooks. That's a real world folder on that device, but that is also on other devices. So Mylio has the ability there to pull that from other devices and easily share it because I can actually grab things there pretty simply. So as I had mentioned, and I'll show you this here, I can share between things. So in a second, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we actually wanna start sharing things across our devices. So you have the ability to move things between folders, organize, do all of that. And you can even do batch reorganization or renaming. So for example, in Mylio, I can go to a folder. I can find a group of pictures that are disorganized and then select those and get them all together. So for example, uh, if I come down here, my family has frequently made trips uh, to certain places repeatedly. You can choose those places and then choose to organize them. So maybe I wanna take that and just kind of get those in a clean place. Or here, I've got a bunch of kid pics, right? 2,186 pictures totally randomized, right? Just random photos that I hadn't had a chance to sort or organize yet. Well, what I can do here from this is choose that folder and more folder actions, organize. And you can do things like year and month or just year by day or come down here to custom and there's all sorts of little recipes you can build out on how things are gonna get organized. So now I'll just say, organize that by year and month. When you do, it's gonna organize them. Now they'll put them into new folders. Those new folders are gonna go to the top of the library here because I organized by year. There they are, right? And I can now just select them. 2004, all the way through 2019. That one's a old one with a bad date, but we'll fix that. And that looks pretty good. Right click, and I'll just say, move to folder. Oh, where do I want that to go? How about the kids folder? Yeah, 
Miley Libraries. That's okay, kid. Kid, ah, kid picks. That's the one. And it takes me right back to the folder tree. Yeah, put them there. And it moves them. And you know what? It didn't just move them here. It's going to move them on my hard drive at home. It moved them on my phone. It's all organized. So you can work from anywhere. And that's what's really cool is that you can organize. Plus there's batch renaming. So instead of just calling these pictures generically DXO0386, I can select all of those pictures and rename. Uh, I'm teaching a class in here. Thank you. <laughs> the joys of conferences, that'll just keep happening repeatedly. So I can select this and say, rename files. Give it a custom name, year, month, date. Well, let's do this, custom. How about we use the year? So easy enough, squiggle. <laughs> I know there's a name for that, it's a bracket. Why? Squiggle Art Museum. And this was the Chicago Art Museum we went to, the Art Institute of Chicago. So I'll just put Chicago. And then I'm going to go underscore and just tell it that I want it to use a number. And let's just do number two. There we go. Continue. It says, are you sure? Because we're about to change something here. Yes. And now all of these pictures have been renamed. So if I look here, you'll see I have 2019 Art Museum Chicago. And then there's the pictures. See, it actually renamed them. Okay. Now I see I made a little mistake there. And so I could rename those again. So let's just do that. Rename. And let me just check what I did there under custom. This is why one should wear one's reading glasses, even if you're presenting. Oh, yeah, it was supposed to be N2. No problem. I'll just fix it. Continue. Rename. It looks at it, thinks. And there we go. 2019 Art Museum, picture 40, picture 24. Right? See, they're all in there. And it renamed them based upon the dates, but I can also now sort or do anything else. And so I've got those things with more meaningful names. So if you're doing research or you have a family activity, don't just use totally generic names for things. You can easily rename things to better match the event so that in the future, it's easier if those files ever become separated to locate them again or to know what they were from. All right. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, we also have this ability to connect all of our devices together. So once we connect our devices, they're in that single network. They can see and talk to each other easily. So Malia Photos works on Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. This gives you the ability to work offline. Now, I'm not going to turn this device offline because I can't demo that because then the camera and the webinar would end, but I'm going to switch screens for a moment and show you how I can work offline on a phone or a tablet without the internet. So I'm just going to do a new screen share here and share my phone. Okay. I think you guys are seeing the phone. And right now the phone's been syncing. At the start of this, I told you how I was syncing some eBooks to my phone some documents. And there it is. It's still downloading, but 10 more of those eBooks have transferred while we were talking. Well, what I can do here is I'm going to go offline for a moment. So I'll just swipe down and I'm going to go ahead and fully disconnect from the Wi-Fi. I'm going to turn cellular data off and I'm going to turn Wi-Fi off and go into airplane mode. There we go. And let's just go under the Wi-Fi settings. So there's no doubt that we're completely offline. Wi-Fi off, cellular data off. That's as off as off gets, other than power off, which we can't do anything then. So I'll launch Mylio. Here it is. I've got half a million photos in my photo library. They're all there. Let's go to all photos. That's gonna let me see everything in one place. Or I can browse them here by photos, by folders. Everything's there. I've got the ability to easily view and see everything pretty seamlessly, which is awesome. So this is going to give us the ability there to really navigate 
and quickly kind of see what's going on. Okay. Now, let me just switch here for a moment. I'm just going to do a quick little refresh and clear out a few apps because my phone's become very cluttered throughout the day. I'm at a trade show here, speaking to people in the booth and doing lots of demos. So I'm just going to clear out all my phone apps so that everything's nice and free memory. Apparently, I haven't done this in a month. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let's jump back in. So now you're going to see here that we have this. Is there a space limit? Well, it depends. Your devices naturally have space limits, but we can control that because Mylio makes an optimized image library. So my photo library at home is 11 terabytes. It's actually 11 and a half now. It's like just under half a million photos. But Mylio can optimize those images and it makes them smaller for the phone. They're still fully editable. They're a five by seven inch print. And I can condense my photo library, in my case, from 11 and a half terabytes to 400 gigabytes. It's like usually about 5% the size of the originals. But everything's here. See, here's my all view. I can go over to folders. There they are. And I can say, you know, I, I want to do a little bit of organization. Oh, here's my scans. This scans folder is literally on my Mac Studio computer at home. It's the folder that my Epson scanner scans into. So as I start to open things up, it's there, right? If I say, oh, let me go in here to personal photos. And earlier, you know, I sent my mom a couple of pictures. So I had scanned some pictures in at home, and then I wanted to send them to her. And so I just selected them and sent them to her. By the way, some scanners like the Epson Fast Photo can scan the back of the photo. So I see here that this picture is from June 1976. I'm pretty sure that that's what that means. And so looking at that there, that is the actual data from this photo here. But looking at these, I see that, you know, multiple pictures. So my grandpa had come over and we were making cookies at our house. So I'm going to go ahead and organize that. Okay. So let me select those pictures from them. And I could just tap, right, like that. And then I can go under info and I can change the date. So scanned photos usually have the date of when you scan them. And that's not really very useful for organization. So I could tap the button here and say, okay, I, I know more than the year. I know that these were from June, 1976. Save. And now they'll sort with the right order. The squiggly lines means it's a fuzzy date. It's an approximate date. So you can go through and organize things and add it. Here, I'm looking at this. That sure looks like a birthday party. So I'm going to bet that that's probably my birthday party when I was a kid. So I can go in and just select those. And it looks like that I got two pictures from my birthday. One was the party and one was, and I'll show you the picture in a moment, but let me modify these. Info. And I feel relatively confident that these were probably on my actual birthday or close enough. So I'll say all day, January 14th. There we go. It updates. And, you know, this is kind of fun because you can go through and organize on your phone from any device. And, you know, I actually know where this was photo was taken to. So I can go and add that information so it's discoverable on a map. Yes, I got that birthday. I got the Donald and Daisy Duck. And the other side was Mickey and Minnie. High quality metal garbage can for my room. That is a very parental gift, right? We're going to give you something that is a garbage can so you can keep your room clean. But we'll give it to you with Mickey Mouse because we know you like Mickey. I did actually like this. I kept this thing for years. It's just looking back on it. It's one of those gifts that I think your parents are trying to send you a message. Now, notice here that these pictures, a lot of them have face tags. And if there's not a face tag, like a profile, I can still tap and press there on my face and start to type in who it is, right? And I can say, oh, that was me. But what's really cool is you might see a photo and realize that you haven't thought about the person for a while, right? This is my grandfather, and I lost him a while back. Well, first up, I'm going to hit auto color. And with one click, I fixed the color of the picture. That's just good because, I mean, it needed it, right? Look how easy that was. But now, you know, I haven't looked at pictures of my grandfather in a while. 
So I can just look at that picture there and I see him. Yep, that's my grandfather. And if I go here into the info tab, let's just open up info. You'll see people. There he is. I can tap on him and say, show me more photos of my grandfather. There they are. These photos are spread out over multiple folders, but they're now all here. There's my grandfather at my college graduation. This looks like maybe open school, open night at school. There's my high school graduation with my grandfather, right? I actually think that's my christening, to be honest, right? That's my baptism. There we are. That's kind of amazing, right? I've actually, I've never seen this photo before. I'd see, it was scanned. My mom had sent me this one and I, you know, I imported it, but seriously, I'd actually never seen this. It's kind of awesome to be able to go back and see those pictures. I never knew my grandfather at this age, but I remember how many times we would have family functions in this living room together, right? So being able to relive these memories is just awesome. And this is one of the things we do, right? Here, that's my aunt. I haven't seen her in a while. I can see, yep, cool. You know, I want to go ahead and see more of that. I'll just tap a button and I can go in and look at that. And I'll say, you know what? Show me that person there, right? So we'll just go ahead and take a look at that. So as I go in and look at my aunt, I can see all the photos of her. And then you might see a memory or an event or an activity. And when you do that, that will let you dig in more. So here, this looks like it was probably a holiday get together. I'm gonna choose that and say, you know, show me the folder that that came from. And now it's gonna take me to all of those pictures. And I'll be able to see every picture that happened at that location, at that event. So that's gonna work out and give you that ability to really kind of explore things. All right, I like this because it just really opens up your photos and makes them more discoverable. All right, let me go back to my main screen here. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. So once we've connected all of our devices here, what happens is everything becomes broadly accessible, okay? And you gotta remember your iPhone, or your Android phone is pretty expensive when it comes to space. Here's a 10 terabyte hard drive. That holds you know, 10 terabytes of photos and videos and documents for about $200. Your phone, a two terabyte phone, costs almost $2,000. This storage on your phone is 45 times more expensive than storage on your computer. Don't buy the biggest phone and pay that premium for no good reason. Every time you take a high quality photo on your phone, it's gonna add up. 40 pictures on a phone at high quality these days equals one gigabyte, okay? You get about 4,000 pictures per terabyte on a phone. It's really easy to fill things up. So you're gonna see a lot less storage. And what's cool though is Mylio, when you import things, does two things right up front. Actually four things technically. First, it scans for text. Second, it's going to look for people, and it creates an optimized image, which is about 5% the size of the original, but fully editable, able to be shared, printed, uh, all sorts of things. It's a five by seven inch print, and you also get everything uniquely indexed with a number, so it's easier to find, and all the metadata is ingested. That makes things very searchable. Now, once you've got everything ingested, too, from any device, you can quickly review. And we just let you, as you're looking through photos, swipe to the left to reject a photo and swipe to the right to keep a photo. Left means left it behind. Right means it's right to keep. And it's an easy way to clean up photos. I also love with my connected devices, the Mylio inbox. So as you're doing things and you come across stuff you wanna save, you totally can do that, right? So I can be here, like here's my father's page on Ancestry. And, you know, that's where he keeps his tree. And I can see different things here. And there's documents. Well, 
Let's see this here, view. Okay, let me see the record. Oh, okay, well, there we go. Now, it's gonna ask me to sign in. I currently not signed in, but what's really cool here is you could then actually see that, right? Or I can click over to view and again, sign in. Now, I'd have to create an account. I'm not gonna do that again, passwords in front of you. But the point is, is as you see things, you can actually save things very easily. And so that makes it simple as you start to gather things up that you might want to collect. And so when you do that, you can then save them right into your folder. Because here on any thing on your computer, you're gonna have a Milio inbox on your computers. And you're gonna have that same thing on your mobile devices. So I'll answer the questions in just one second. So up here is my Milio inbox. And it's basically my to organize folder. So I've got some pictures that I scan from slides. I've got the record here of my grandma's wedding. And look, it even recognized her face. <laughs> even with all of that bad photocopy, it still managed to get her face. I've got a picture that my wife texted me and I just saved it, right? Things you come across. This photo came out of, Snap, uh, out of WhatsApp. My wife sent me the pictures of my daughter as she had her first high school dance, you know? So all these things become accessible as you're doing stuff, and then you just have them there ready to file for later. Okay, let me go up a level here, and you can see that inbox. These are all pictures that are basically waiting to be organized for later. All right, I see your questions here. There is not a space limit. It's just your storage, so it's pretty simple. Milio costs $99 a year. Uh, we have a show special running during Roots Tech, and that's unlimited number of devices, unlimited storage. And you also get a video course on scanning and a certificate to print a book. This is software. Yep, absolutely software. It's software that runs on your app, and on your mobile devices, on your tablets, on everything else. And it's also able to um, provide a service. So the service component allows your devices to talk to each other. So, you know, here I am traveling and my laptop is plugged in on an ethernet network here uh, in this room that they gave us to present. And my phone right now, I put into airplane mode, it's offline. Well, I'm gonna go out of airplane mode for a second and I just reconnect to the Wi-Fi here and the convention center. I'm on two totally different networks. I'm nowhere near my house, okay? So it's now thinking and it's gonna find it and I'm just gonna check that I'm on the right network. Let me switch over to the Convention Center Premium Network. Hopefully it'll let me back in <laughs> without asking me to pay again. But uh, it's thinking. There we go. Looks like it's online. Check. Good. And I'll launch my lamb. And as soon as my phone registers, my phone reaches out over the internet and says, hey, I'm over here. And my computer says, I'm over here. Milio lets those two things come together and handshake. And then the Milio service steps back and your devices are now talking to each other and communicating seamlessly. And in this case, I think you can kind of see it there. I'll just put it in there. The little icon is spinning at the top, indicating that files are syncing. And so it's transferring things that were on my laptop that my phone wanted because I had put some eBooks on my phone. So we let your devices talk to each other and transfer files seamlessly between each other without having to put things in the cloud. We'll talk about the cloud in a moment. If you want to use the cloud, you can, but it's purely optional, okay? So that just puts everything together in a connected state and pulls it together. Now, there's one other question about categories. Can I use categories? Yes. So besides organizing by people and organizing by event or location or anywhere else, you can apply categories. So maybe I wanna select a range of photos here and just say, oh, this here is a part of a category and family category, but you can edit this list and add more. And you can have up to, I believe, 50 categories and categories make it really easy to sort things. So, and photos can have multiple categories, 
but you can make categories for a particular family member, uh, a side of your family, if you're organizing things. You can make family uh, categories for things like vacations. And that way, quickly get to the stuff you want when you click on the filter button and you can filter by any of your categories or by person or rating or labels or flags, camera. We're about to come out with a whole bunch more of filters though that are really awesome. And I'll talk about that. The great thing though with that Mileo inbox is you can be in any sort of app and then just hit share. So here I was in WhatsApp and I shared a couple of photos to myself and just dropped them into Mileo photos. And that's how they got into the inbox. And they were there ready to use later, which is cool. And it makes it really easy to get in and find those things. We also do the reflect stage. This is where you think about what you want to do. So you can add those metadata. I already showed you this. We added real dates to scanned photos. That's great because then they show up and you can organize them. And you can also tell it to actually update the real files too under the photo menu. You can say save to file. Um, you can use albums to organize things. And you can then find things using these great select tools. So for example, let me show you two quick things. So here's an example of how my brain works, okay? So I can type in eagle, right? And you're like, how did it know that? Remember, tech search. It read Richard Harrington got his Eagle Scout. It read Eagle Scout on the patch, that little tiny patch. It read Eagle Scout on the neckerchief slide all the way in there on the original high quality photo. Here, that's my daughter. And when our scouts, uh, when my scouts in my family make it to Eagle, uh, we buy them a brick by making a donation to our council to help them remember that. Well, you know what? We've been to this building several times. This is our council's office. And I have a little map icon here. I can say, oh, you know, I want to explore that location on the map. And it takes me to the map and shows me that location. And look, there's slight variations in metadata, like depending on where you take a picture. We were around the office there, but let's zoom out. And I can now see, oh, look, there's that event. Oh, this is when we turned in the Eagle Scout paperwork. Oh, this is when she, you know, uh, dropped off her paperwork. Oh, wait a minute. Look at that one. Oh, I love this one. Here they are. My son was doing a flag ceremony. He was a brand new scout, 10 and a half years old. She's seven. Brownie scout. That memory came back because we sorted by location. It didn't matter that these were in different folders, totally different places. Oh, here's my son as a life scout dropping off his application and turning it in. And oh yeah, he's not tagged here because you really can't see the face, but I can tag him. So now that next time I search for pictures of Michael, it finds pictures of Michael. And I don't know who this person is, so I can ignore it so it doesn't add it to my catalog, right? See how easy that is? Ignore. And it goes, oh, I think this is Michael. Is it? Because it's a partial profile, but it guesses. And I now tag him, right? And so it makes it really easy to find things. So you've got people tags and text tags and OCR search. Those things can also be used for filters. So earlier, I told you how I made a photo book and that if you purchase Milio during the show, we give you a certificate for a photo book. Well, I just went to my all photos view and said, hey, I want to filter and show me the pictures from date last year and person. And I just said, show me pictures of Michael and pictures of Colleen and pictures of Megan. and pictures of Rich. In this case, these are all ors. We're going to be releasing a new tool uh, a little bit in a couple of months where you can be more specific and say, oh, it has to be Richard and Megan at the same time. And then you could do really specific searches. But here's the whole year. And then I can go through and start to select what I want and narrow that down and then just choose the best pictures to drop into a book. It's that simple, which is really cool. So that's the power of filters. And a little bit later on, we're going to add more tools 
So you can search with AI tools, like show me the ones that have smiles and eyes open or ones where they're outdoors at the beach or ones where there's a dog in the picture, like all these great ways of searching. So it's going to really change the way you find things. Plus, we give you the ability to basically enhance and repair your issues. So for example, if you've got photos that have been scanned, we make it simple to fix those. Not only can you fix the fact that they are, um, you know, have bad dates, you can go in and actually fix things like the color issues, right? So I can drop here into 1974, choose the photo that was all faded, and just click auto color, and it's going to move it back to the right direction, right? I could choose a photo that's dark, and again, you know, drop in and do auto color, and then lift up the exposure a little bit, and quickly rotate that picture, and straighten it, right? Oh, and that's looking pretty good. Just lift the shadows a little bit. There we go. See? And there's my Uncle Chuck. And that's me. Well, since I know that and I haven't tagged people, I'll just click on the face. And if it didn't yet scan the face, I could still tag myself and tag it in. So that allows you to quickly add things in and tag your photos. Okay? So let me go ahead here and switch back to the slide presentation for just a second. Give me one second. I hit the wrong key on Zoom there. It dropped me out of screen sharing. There we go. I think that's it. I'm sharing my screen. Okay, good. So we then lastly provide protection, keeping things automatically backed up. So with Mylio, we encourage you to attach multiple hard drives that are empty to start out with. You can start off with one that already has your stuff, but you mark them as vaults. This is a vault. It's just a hard drive that you said, I want all my stuff backed up there so I have an extra copy. Because there's things like fires, floods, you name it. I keep one vault, I periodically unplug it and stick it in a fire safe at home. I also put my optimized images up to Google in OneDrive. So with both my Gmail account and my OneDrive account, I get a terabyte of storage. I have all my optimized images, also called smart previews up there. They're five by seven inch prints, 300 pixels per inch, ready to print, ready to share. And it only takes up about 450 gigabytes of space. If I lost everything, every device, my house, every hard drive, I could go get a new device, log into my Milio account, pull those down and promote them to new master files. That's incredible. And that's included, you know, with all of these plans. A little later on this summer, we're going to actually, instead of you having to use Google or other services, we'll offer you a secure online place that's encrypted, meaning that you can't, nobody can do anything with the data but you. And that'll be included in your membership. So this is really awesome that this keeps things safe. And if you put it in the cloud, you have the ability to mark it as encrypted. And that means that none other things but your hardware devices can view the data. That way, you never have to worry about losing photos again. It's all backed up. It's on your vaults. If there was a fire or an issue or you had to quickly leave home, you can unplug it and run. One of my friends was part of, uh, it was living in Kiev, and he and his family had to quickly leave for the war. Lots of their stuff got left behind, and they'll probably never be able to reclaim it. They did bring almost all their photos and stuff with them. They quickly packed and left. But there are times when you have to move. You know, I remember living in the Midwest in Iowa. And, you know, if there's a tornado, usually you hunker down. But other times, you know, there's times like forest fires in California and you have to leave your home. You're not going to get that stuff back. So being able to pick up one hard drive and unplug it and leave the house with everything in one place matters. So this provides that safety. And the way the Milo works, it's really straightforward. Your original files on your desktop type computers are on hard drives, vaults, full quality, protected against loss because you have more than one vault in case your hard drive crashes or you have an issue or you get a virus. Your laptop or your tablet probably has enough space that you can shrink things down. So a terabyte of photos, which is going to be about 500, uh, it's going to be about 500 let me do that math right. 
about 50,000 photos. That's about a terabyte. That's going to allow you to shrink it down to only 45 gigs of space. And that'll fit on phones, tablets, laptops, you name it. But if you're really concerned for space, you can put things just on the phone with a browsable catalog and then tap and grab things as you go. Remember, with Mylio, if there's something that I need, it's simple. When I want to work on something here, like let's say I want these files here, you know, I could just say, oh, you know what? I, I really needed that, right? So I wanted these scans at original quality. But maybe I realize that I want to, you know, work on these materials here and I want them at original quality. I just click the button and choose original and they download. Or maybe I just want certain files, right? Maybe I'm in here and I realize that I want to grab a couple of pictures so I can work with them. I can go in and choose what I want and open up and then just say that I want to download that original and it will bring it down to this device. Or when I go to edit it, it will edit it. And so you have that total control, which is really pretty awesome. And you just flip it and say, download. Later, it'll free up the space. See, there the counter. It's just downloading. It's syncing. See? And if I look at that, I can see that it's syncing. So that's how it works. And later, it frees up space. So that's really kind of cool. And why do you do this? Well, when you choose to put things in the cloud, we let you choose specific people or only your four stars and five star photos or only certain categories. You have total control because most people's photo libraries have a ratio where really somewhere around 25% of the photos are the really good ones. And you have lots of pictures that you just have to organize still or maybe get rid of. And you want to do this because if you take your photo library at home and you type in the word password or American Express or Visa, you're going to find that you have all sorts of things in your camera roll, right? Look at all this stuff with the word password. A screenshot from an official letter from the State Department. The back of my modem that I took a picture on so I could see it and reset the modem. An over-the-screen photo shot, right? Typing. All that stuff's there. It's kind of crazy. And it can even brighten it up and see it. Things get indexed, and that's not good. So you want to get that stuff off of the cloud or get it into an encrypted state if you're going to use the cloud. We make backups so we have multiple copies, okay? And we want a backup because losing things is really common. I'm going a little fast here, but you can download these slides. Remember, most people have never made a backup. And 113 phones are lost and stolen every minute. So this really adds up. I'll be done shortly. The class is supposed to go. Okay. And here we go. So you have three copies on two types of devices, two media, and one of them off-site. All right? Great. So I'm going to have to transition here so that the next presenter can get ready. And when you share with Mylio, you are able to safe share. So when you go to social media or any networks, you can remove any metadata, no personal tags, no geotags, none of that information. So the photos are totally private. Thank you guys for coming out. I invite you to go ahead and check that out. I hope you enjoy it. We do have a full suite of training available on our website. This will let you download and access everything. We have all of those materials there. A quick start guide, getting started videos, an ongoing community. And the benefits here is you always have your photos. You're never going to lose a photo. Quickly find things and have easy, convenient editing access tools to make it simple to work with. And this was Gathering and Protecting Your Photos, Your Family's Digital Legacy. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and have a great day.